Hello everyone, I'm Terry Duke and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be showing you all the steps to installing Fallout 4 mods from start to finish, specifically if you own the game on Steam and play on PC. If you've been wanting to get mods for Fallout 4 but had no clue on how to do it, well then this video is for you. I've designed this tutorial to cover everything from the script extender to using mod managers like Vortex as well as the body sliders. Keep in mind though that setting up Fallout 4 to install mods can be a bit tricky and take a bit of time, especially if you're new to this, but once it's all set, installing mods becomes very easy. So in this video I'm going to explain all of the programs you will need to run Fallout 4 mods, and then I'll take you through each step of the modding process, and at the end, we'll be installing two mods to make sure everything was done right. I've separated the video into chapters, so feel free to skip ahead as well. So, quick overview of all the programs you will need. In order to install Fallout 4 mods in a structured manner, you will need two main things, the Fallout 4 Script Extender, or FRSC for short, and Vortex. The Script Extender is a version of Fallout 4 that is optimized for modding, and pretty much all the mods require you to have the Script Extender to work properly. The Script Extender is free, it's safe, and it's very easy to install, therefore it should be the very first thing we set up. However, the extender comes in a compressed file, and to extract it, you will also need WinRAR, which is also free and safe. Vortex is the mod manager used for Nexus. Nexus Mods is the website to get mods, not just for Fallout 4, but virtually every game. So Vortex is essentially the desktop program that allows you to automatically download and install mods in the proper path, as well as sort them out properly. This program is also free, though to use it and consequently to use Nexus Mods, you will need to create a free account. Essentially, to understand how modding works and what we're trying to set up, just look at this illustration. So we have the game, and we have mods from Nexus. For the mods to work in Fallout, we need the script extender, and to get the mods from Nexus to the game, we need Vortex. And that's pretty much it. So the links for everything you need are in the description, so before we get into the process of setting up Vortex, you will need to create an account with Nexus Mods, and you will need to install Renoir if you don't already have it. And then we can move on to installing the Script Extender. To install the Script Extender, follow the link down below, which takes you to the Nexus page for the script. Scroll down a bit and click the Files tab. And under Main Files, you have the script, and two options to download, Mod Manager or Manual. Mod Manager would mean installing through Vortex, which you could do, but in the case of the script extender, I just find it better to do it manually, so that's what we'll do. On the next page, click Download again. If this option doesn't appear, it means you don't have a Nexus account or you're not logged in, so make sure to do that. Now, get to your downloads on the computer, and assuming you installed WinRAR, the program should open the zip file automatically, like so. If it doesn't, then right-click and open with Renoir. Once you do, it should look like this. Renoir is previewing the files from the script extender from within the compressed file. If you click the folder, you can see all of the elements, including a readme file that tells you what to do in case I'm not clear enough, as well as another text file on the latest changes to the script. The rest are all the script extender files. To install them, we need to move all of those files into the folder on your computer, which contains Fallout 4, the game. So to find where Steam installed the game, head over to your Steam library and find Fallout 4. Then right click, go to properties, then go to installed files and then click browse. This will open Windows Explorer and lead you straight to the game folder. So from WinRAR, which shows all of the script extender elements, select everything, then drag and drop all of it into the Fallout 4 main folder. If you're prompted to replace certain files, go right ahead. Don't worry about messing up the game, it won't. What it mainly does is add a new launcher to the game in addition to the regular launcher. So this new launcher for Fallout 4 is called FRSC underscore loader. So right click on it and create a shortcut. And then drop this shortcut on your desktop. And from here on out, instead of launching the game from Steam, you can launch it from this shortcut. By using this shortcut, you will be playing Fallout 4 with the script extender, which will make it easier to run mods. The final test to make sure the script extender is installed properly is by bringing up the command console while in the game's menu. To do so, hit the tiled key on your keyboard, which is this key, and it should bring up a text box at the bottom of the screen. If it doesn't, use the Windows key plus spacebar shortcut to change the language of your keyboard until the tiled key brings up the console. In this console, type the following, get F4SE version, and then you should see a message showing you the script's version. This message confirms you installed the script extender properly. If you don't get the message, it most likely means you missed a step, so go back and make sure to follow everything properly. Keep in mind, the only issue with the script extender is that you don't get the usual launcher menu, which normally allows you to tweak the graphical settings. So if you wanted to change the graphics settings, you need to run the game from Steam, set it how you want, and after that, you need to launch the game again from the script extender and the graphics settings will apply. It's a bit annoying, but it's still easy to work around. But anyway, that's how you install the script extender, so let's move on to Vortex. 
We're already getting pretty close to installing mods now, but we still have to set up Vortex, so follow the link down below to get the link, and follow the instructions for installing it. Now, Vortex can be a bit confusing to use, but for this tutorial I will be specifically using it for Fallout 4, so stick to my instructions and you should be fine. Since you've already created an account on Nexus, you should get connected instantly upon entering Vortex. However, if it doesn't, just click the account icon at the top right, at which point Nexus will open again, asking for permission to link the account. And that should do it. Once your account is linked, the first thing we need to do is link Fallout 4 to Vortex, so that Vortex can manage the mods that we will install. To do that, head over to the Games menu on the left side. Here, you can see all of the games that Vortex can manage, so in the search bar, start tapping Fallout until Fallout 4 appears, at which point you can click Manage on the game. At this point, not only is Vortex now managing the game, but you will see the game cover on the top left, indicating that all the settings from the mods and plugins are now directly associated with Fallout 4. If you go back to the dashboard, now you will see under Tools a few things, including the newly installed Script Extender, which Vortex has detected. So clicking on the three dots, you also have the option to start the game from here. So now, it's time to install mods. So for this tutorial, I left a link in the description for True Storms, a very common and popular mod from Fallout 4 that lets you control the weather. So follow the link and get to the Files tab, and here we see the two options to download from before, but this time we're going to use the Mod Manager option. And on the next window, click Download again. So at this point you can head back to Vortex, and under Download you will see the mod downloading. It will then automatically install. In the process, some mods, such as this one, will ask you to select a few preferences. For example, this mod can be used in the Four Harbor DLC, but it's optional. I will check the option, and then I proceed to the next options. This next option offers to make the glowing sea more radioactive, which again is up to you. Go through all of the options and then hit finish. The mod will finish installing and then it will deploy. After that, if you go in the mods tab, you will see the mod currently installed. And that's it, you're done. So you can launch the game and once you're in the game, go to your pip boy and under misc you should now see the holotapes for true storm. Select weather control, then select commonwealth, then choose any weather you like, then leave the pip boy. If the weather changes, then you know the mod was installed properly, so congratulations. If it didn't work, then go back through the steps and make sure you didn't do any mistakes. But at this point, you've successfully set Fallout 4 to install mods from Nexus, the best place to get mods in the first place. So use the link down below for the main Fallout 4 page, and feel free to browse forever, from the newest mods to the most popular. Whenever you see a mod you like, just click on it, head to Files, download with Mod Manager, follow the process in Vortex, then launch the game, and you're good to go. Normally, it is that simple to install mods, but in practice, there are a few common issues, so let's address some of those. The first one comes down to requirements. A lot of mods often depend on other mods to function properly. Whenever you download a mod though, a warning message will pop up with a link to all of the other mods required for this one to work properly, if there's any. So you'll have to install these other mods in order for this mod you want to work. Otherwise, if you're curious about what the mods need, you can just look at the requirements tab in the description to see all of the mods that are needed. A lot of mods also have specific needs, or need to be loaded in a specific way, or are simply incompatible with another mod you already have. For all of this info, make sure to read the description of the mod thoroughly, or if you experience certain bugs, make sure to look at the Post and Bugs tab, as people may have similar problems, and they may have found solutions. But often, the final main culprit is the load order. The load order refers to the order in which mods load in the game. Some mods need to be loaded before other mods to work properly, and sometimes that order gets messed up. Vortex uses loot to order mods and plugins automatically, but sometimes it might send you a message that it doesn't know what to do with certain mods, at which point you have to decide yourself what mod to load first. Thankfully, the interface is fairly simple here. You just have to look at the notifications on Vortex. It may also happen that mods become redundant, as in, the same some mods can appear twice within different mods, so one of them can be disabled. Vortex, though, will ask you permissions to do this as well. All of these issues are more likely to occur the more mods you have, but to give you an idea, I typically run Fallout with around 120 mods simultaneously. So it's all about installing mods gradually and seeing how well the game runs. If suddenly you start experiencing crashes, then look at the most recent mods you installed, as they are likely the culprit. But as far as installing and managing mods using Vortex, this is pretty much it. Now, there are other places you can get mods from, and the main one besides Nexus is from the game itself, as Bethesda provides a space to install mods through the mod menu. The reason I didn't mention it before is because there just isn't as much variety here, and far less control. 
However, once you set up Vortex, the mods you install from Bethesda can be seen as a plugin in Vortex, which allows you to disable or enable them at will. So to install mods from within the game, just head into the mod menu. Feel free to browse and if you like something, just click the download option at which point you'll see the download until it's finished. So just to see how it works, let's try a simple one. In the search bar, type quick power armor, enter and exit. This mod just does that, it makes you enter power armors faster even when not in direct battle. So download it, then quit the game and then look for the mod in the plugins tab on Vortex. Chances are it's there but not enabled, so simply click on it to enable. Then when you launch the game, enter a suit of power armor to see if it works, and it should. So again, it's very simple and you can definitely use mods from here, but again for me personally I feel it's a bit limiting, so if I happen to find the same mod on Nexus, I prefer to get it from there instead. And finally, in this last part, I want to introduce you to the Body Slider. Caliente's Beautiful Bodies Enhancer, or CBBE for short, as it's called, is a mod that allows you specifically for a female character to customize the body shape however you want. Now, I'm not one to judge people on their proclivities, but it's one of those mods that require a bit more finesse and uses a fairly specific tool, the Body Slider. And if you start getting a lot of clothes mod, the Body Slider becomes important to make sure all of the clothes fit your character perfectly. So in order to customize your character's body, you will need CBBE as well as the Body Slider Studio. Install both of these using Vortex as mentioned before, link down below. When it's done, get to the dashboard on Vortex and under Tools, you should see the Body Slider. If you don't, just click plus and it should be there. After that, click on the center of the icon to open the Body Slider. Upon it opening, you will get the choice of each game you're modding and you will need to set the path. So next to Fallout 4, click the three dots. Make sure your path is set on the data folder of Fallout 4 and nowhere else, otherwise it might create issues. Select the folder and we're good to go. So I'm not going to go into it too much, most of this is designed for you to experiment with, so instead, the few things to keep in mind. The preview at the bottom gives you just that. The preview is based on the outfit selected at the top, so here it's the mechanist, but you can pick any outfit from the game. Generally, you'll want to stick to CBBE body, however, I will be using CBBE never nude, so as to not get my channel deleted. You can then use your mouse to move the preview around, zoom in, and all of that. But once you have the preview you want, you can experiment with the sliders. So. There you go, I'm gonna make a big butt. Yeah, big butt, there you go. Any modifications you make, you can save as a preset right here. To save the preset into the game, you just gotta click Build. However, this will only create the preset for the specific suit you are currently previewing. So to apply the body shape to all of your outfits, just click on Batch Build. Everything will be checked, so click Build and then just wait for a bit. And now all of the outfits in the game will match your body shape. After that, you can launch the game and see if your new body works for you. And so those are the basics for CBBE and the studio, as it was the basics for modding in Fallout 4. So thanks for watching everybody, I hope this tutorial was thorough and helped you out. If you have any questions, leave them down below and I'll do my best to answer all of them. And also make sure to subscribe, as I will soon be showcasing my favorite mods from Fallout 4, which will make for some great recommendations. Thanks again, and I'll see you soon. Targets have disengaged.